we're talking about prayer, right? Yes. And we established that God wants us to ask. And then we also talked about the importance of continuing to pray that, you know, we shouldn't give up. We shouldn't stop. Um, you know, it may seem like it's a long time coming or there may be a, a time, a span of time between the time you pray and the time the answer is manifested, but you want to stay in faith. You want to continue to believe God. So we looked at Matthew chapter 7 and verses 7 through 8. Uh, in the New Living Translation, it says, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. So we looked at that particular scripture. We also uh, looked at some, um, like when Jesus talked about the uh, unjust um, judge or king, and we, we looked at that. We, we looked at the, um, also, let's see, what else? Well, that's enough. Okay, so here's some of the things that we talked about. Are, that could hinder our prayers. One was busyness. So we looked at Mary and Martha and how Jesus told Martha that Mary had chosen the best thing. She chose to sit at Jesus' feet. And as we said at that time, there's nothing wrong with making sure things are taken care of, but that is not the most important thing. The most important thing is to see and to hear what Jesus has to say. We talked about shame. Um, we talked about how uh, feeling shame, feeling guilty, or having regret, or, or you know, feeling like you've done something wrong, that that could keep you from going into God's presence with confidence. Right? We talked about that, um, and we know that we shouldn't do that. We also talked about um, pride. So um, how proud people don't ask for help. Well, you know, I'm one of those people who likes to fix stuff. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'm like, I'm trying to figure it out instead of just going to God first. You know, it's like, okay, I get to my wits end. It's like, okay, God, can you help me? And he's like, well, I've been here all the time. I wanted to help you from the beginning. But. Pride can get in the way thinking, you know, we can figure it out. We can do it ourselves. And so we talked about that. And, um, you know, if you are, are a person can be prideful um, in thinking that they can do it themselves. And then that hinders you from going to the father who has the answers. So we don't want to do that either. Um, and then tonight we want to talk about doubt and lack of faith. So, um, to start off with this, let me just ask you this question. Have you ever asked someone to do something for you and you had no confidence when you asked them that they would follow through? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. You asked them, and even when you were asking, you're like, I know they're not going to do it. And they're standing there telling me they're going to do it, and I know they're not going to do it. But, you know, it really, sometimes that's how we treat God. We're, we're asking him, but then we're not confident that he's going to do it. And so that in itself, doubt and a lack of faith will hinder or kill your prayer. Because you're not asking in faith, you're asking with doubt, and that's not going to work. So, um, a couple of notes that I wrote, I wrote, number one, uh, doubt and lack of faith is a prayer killer. Uh, doubt means to, like, hesitate or to waver, you know, to not be sure. Um, but when we're talking about prayer, we're talking about the one who created the earth and everything in it, the one who created us, and we can trust him. We can trust him. So when you think about it, 
what we're actually doing when it comes to prayer, when we have doubt or a lack of faith, we're actually doubting who Jesus is and what he did. I mean, when you put it in a nutshell, that's what you're doing. You, you're, you're doubting, Jesus, are you really the son of God? Jesus, did you really die for me? Jesus, did you really redeem me? Jesus, did you really um, take stripes on your back to heal me? Jesus, did you really do that? That can hinder your, your um, prayer, right? So, um, you know, so doubting who he is, you know, he's the son of God. He's the lamb that took away the sins of the world. You know, all of these doubting him. When you come to God and you're praying, you have to have confidence in who he is. You have to have confidence that he can do what he said he would do. It's important for us to, to come that way. And he says so in, in, look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. So our prayers just don't work if we doubt God and we doubt his word. So it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder. So if we don't believe that he is and that he's the rewarder, how are you coming? It says, but without faith, it's impossible. It's impossible to please him. Um, the New Living Translation says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Now, I like what the Message Bible says. It says, by an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked all over and couldn't find him because God had taken him. We know on the, on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. It is impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. So we must believe, as it says here, but anyone who wants to approach God, anyone who wants to pray, Anyone who wants to talk to God, it says you must believe both that he exists, right, that he is God, and then it says that he cares enough to respond to you. And then in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 8, you're all familiar with this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, Malachi 3, 6 says, For I am the Lord, and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. James 1, 17. Why don't you turn there? James 1, 17. In the King James Version, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And the New Living Translation says, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in heaven. He never changes or casts shifting shadows. So good things come from God, right? So when we pray, we want to make sure that we believe that God is a good God that he wants to do good things for us. You know, that he's not sitting up in heaven waiting to see if we're going to mess up. He's not saying, hey, Jesus, you know what? Let's, let's watch them today. Let's see what they're going to do. Let's see if they're going to make it through the day without sinning. No. 
He's looking for what you're doing right. He's looking at your heart. He's looking to see how he can bless you. That's what he's doing. So when you talk to him, he's already got in his heart, in his mind, that he's trying to figure out how to bless you. He's trying to figure out how to get good things to you. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lies. Every good and perfect gift. God doesn't give you junk. But we've got to believe that he exists, and we have to believe that he will reward us. Amen? Okay, so then in um, Numbers chapter 23, again, this is one that you're familiar with. Verse 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Praise God. And then in the New Living Translation, it says, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? So when we come to God, we can't come with doubt. We can't come without faith. Now, you know, around here, we, we, are, we encourage people that before you pray, get a scripture, at least one scripture, You know, that you can pray about your situation. If you're needing peace, you know, you can say, you can, there's many scriptures about peace. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. So you can say, Father God, I come to you. In your word, it says that. Jesus gives me peace. So I thank you that I have peace. Father, you said you would keep those um, in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Well, I'm setting my mind on you, Father. So I thank you that I have perfect peace. And then you expect that to happen. Right? That's believing that he is. And that he'll do what he said he would do. So there's many um, scriptures I was thinking about. Um, you know, uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 21 through 22 in the New Living Translation, it says, Then Jesus told them, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and don't doubt, you can do things like this and much more. You can even say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will, be, it will happen. You can pray for anything and if you have faith, did you hear that? You can pray for anything and if you have faith, you will receive it. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you receive it, it will be yours. So, of course, he was um, in the context. uh, He had uh, spoken to the fig tree and they saw it, you know, as they were coming back, traveling back that way. And uh, they said, you know, look, Jesus, the fig tree, it's withered at the root. And Jesus said, yeah, you can do that. You can do the same thing. You can speak to a mountain, and and it has to move. So, um, and then you think about in James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person who 
with divided loyalty is as settled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. So really, when, you know, in this context, it's talking about wisdom, asking for wisdom, but if anything, if you ask for, you can put anything in there. It could be uh, money. It could be whatever, you know, um, it could be joy. It could be health. Whatever it may be, don't waver. Believe God. Trust God. You know, don't be divided. Praise the Lord. So um, remember Doubting Thomas? I, I was, you know, it was interesting to me when I was looking at doubt. Jesus really, he dealt with people differently with doubt. Like with Thomas, you know, Thomas wasn't there when he initially went and showed himself to the disciples. Thomas wasn't there, and Thomas said, well, I won't believe it, you know, unless I can put my fingers, you know, in, in, in uh, the nail prints, unless I can thrust my hand, you know, into his side. So Jesus shows up, and he says, hey, Thomas, I'm here. Go ahead and do what you said. And Thomas is like, oh, Lord, you know, I'm, you know. And Jesus is like, okay, you believe because you, you have seen. But what about the people who haven't seen? They're blessed because they have faith because they believed without seeing. But, you know, I think it was, I, I, you know, he didn't come back right away. Uh, Jesus didn't come back and show himself to Thomas right away. I think he let Thomas kind of stew a little bit like, hey, you know, you should have believed. I'd already told you before I died what was going to happen. Think about it. He had already told him what was going to happen. So Thomas didn't believe that Jesus was actually resurrected. He didn't believe it until he saw it with his natural eye. But he could have believed just based on what Jesus had already told him. And then the other disciples told him he appeared, and he still didn't believe them. So, you know, sometimes we, we read the word, we hear the word, but we still got to believe the word. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go to the next one. I don't have much time. Laziness. Okay, I know this is a good one. Okay, so let's be real. Prayer requires commitment, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a prayer, it requires your time. It requires commitment. It requires willingness. Um, prayer can be work. You know, I mean, not in the, a bad sense, but you have to spend some time doing it. If you want to be effective at it, right? Praise God. I'm telling you, I, I can remember <laughs> there's times where I'm like, Lord, I know I need to pray. And my eyes are so heavy and I don't want to get out of my bed. You know, like recently it's been really cold in the morning and my body is saying, uh-uh. And my mind is really saying, uh-uh. And my spirit's like, you got to pray because you know you can't get throughout the day without prayer. So... It takes commitment. It really does. And um, so if we want to be close to God, if we want to have this intimate relationship with him, we have to spend time with him. It doesn't come any other way. It, it just doesn't. I wish it did. You know, sometimes, you know, think about it. Um, if you want better eating habits, what do you have to do? You got to eat better. What if you want to clean your house? What do you have to do? You got to get up and clean your house. What if you want a better marriage? What do you have to do? What if you, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. 
What I'm trying to say, the point I'm trying to make is that anything you want, you're going to have to do something for it. It's not going to just come and somebody's going to lay it in your lap. It just does not work that way. I, like I said, I wish some things did. I wish better eating habits did, but it doesn't. You know, I have to work at it. Um, you know, so we have to, to make a commitment, and I actually have a few things here that maybe can help. Okay, first of all, though, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, it says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Wow. Um, the New Living Translation says, Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. So right here, this is a good reason to pray. So we don't enter into temptation, Right? Um, Edwin Harvey said this. He said, a day without prayer is a day without blessing. And a life without prayer is a life without power. Wow. Okay, so here's some practical things. Number one, choose to pray. So we got to form a habit. They say that it takes 21 days to make a habit. So for 21 days straight, you got to pray. Okay? So choose to pray. Choose a location. Decide where you're going to pray, you know, in your house. Where are you going to pray? You're going to pray in your living room. You're going to pray in your bedroom. You're going to pray in your closet. Where are you going to pray? Okay. Choose a time of day that works best. You know, some people, um, morning is, is best for them. Others, you know, later in the day. Some people at night. But you got to choose a time to pray and be consistent. Consistency is important. You know, don't just, you know, haphazardly, well, today I think I'll do this, and tomorrow I think I'll do this. No, you got to be consistent. Early in the morning works best for me. That's my best time. If I don't pray early in the morning, uh, I, I, it's difficult for me to pray later. But that's my day. That's, that's me. So I know I have to get up in the morning and pray, Okay. That's not your time, Minister Floyd? He said that's not his time. (laughs) So, um, yeah, he's a night owl. (laughs) So, and, you know, and people work. They have different schedules. People have children. You know, there's different things. But the thing is, it's important to choose a time and stick to it. There is no law that says you have to pray first thing in the morning. There is no law. This is, you, you know, we're not like the Muslims. How many times? Five times a day? Five times a day. You know, I, we're, that's, no, that's not what we're saying, okay? So another thing is ask God for help. Um, you know, ask him. The Holy Spirit will help you. Another thing would be to read your Bible, if prayer is responding to God's word, you know, um, in other words, what, what I'm saying is re- the reason to read your Bible is a lot of times when you're reading your Bible, you can pray about what you're reading. It gives you a, a place to start, you know, especially like if you're in the Psalms and you're, you're, you're reading the Psalms. And it's saying, you know, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Well, right there, God, I thank you that you're so good. I thank you for your mercy for me today. I thank you that your mercies are new every morning. There's your, there's a prayer, right? Okay. So, um, if you're reading about healing, Father, I thank you that my body is healed. I thank you I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I thank you, Father God, that... By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. I was healed. Hallelujah. Okay, so that's another way. Establish a pattern. Um, something that has helped me, and, and I don't do it all the time, but uh, there was a time in my life where I would say, okay, on Monday, um, you know, I mean, I would do a general prayer like I'd pray for, in other words, I'd do a general prayer every day. But then on 
certain days of the week, I would pray for different things. Like I might pray for my children on Monday. I may pray for the staff on Tuesday. Um, I may pray for, uh, spend more time praying for our nation on Wednesday. So in other words, I, I kind of decided on these days, I'm going to pray for this and this. So I kind of categorized it, if that makes sense. But I still deal, do, you know, did or do a general prayer overall. But, you know, like I'd pray the Ephesians prayers. I'd pray Colossians. I'd pray Philippians. I'd pray those every day. Still endeavor to pray those every day. But, but then I would pray specifically for certain things. Like, you know, it's not just praying for my four no more. There's many things to pray for. So I would come up with, with different things. Um, you know, like there would be days where I'd pray for the loss. You know, I would consistently pray for the loss on this day. I would set that day aside to say, God, you know, I'm, I'm going to pray for the loss today. Just different ways to help us to, to pray, right? And it doesn't get old. It doesn't get, you know, stale. We're talking to God about things. And then, of course, you know, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you say, you know, Father, what do you want to pray about? Holy Spirit, what do I need to pray? Grant me utterance. You know, so you pray in the Holy Ghost. I think it was um, Gloria Copeland, I heard that she prays like 30 minutes or so just in the Holy Ghost before she even starts praying for anything else. But, you know, that builds you up in your most holy faith. So um, another thing Ask for accountability. Oh, before I go to that, though, corporate prayer. Come to prayer. Come to corporate prayer. That's on Tuesdays. Uh, Pray before the services. That's another way to get you involved in prayer, get you in the habit of praying. Okay, then ask for accountability. That would be another thing. If You know what? I I can tell you this. If If my prayer life is laxed, my love walk is laxed. <laughs> it really is. I can, I can catch myself if I can see I'm not having patience with people. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can tell. It's like, okay, you, you're, you're, you're lacking. You, you haven't been praying the way you should be praying or as often as you should be praying. Because when you are in the Father's presence, And you're talking to him. He's given you what's in him. You're connected to that life. You're connected to that love. And it helps you to walk out this Christian life. Right? Okay. So, um, so I, I, you know, the Holy Spirit will check me. But. Um, if you're newer to prayer, if you feel like you want to increase your prayer time, find somebody to, that you can be accountable to or you can be accountable to each other. You know, there was a season in my life that I would pray for, um, I would pray with some people in the mornings. Well, that was definitely accountability because we had to be on the phone at a certain time. Okay? So there's just different, different ways you can do that. Um, and they can ask you, you know, how's your prayer life going? Have you been praying every day? So that's good. Then uh, another thing is a lack of uh, a lack of being sincere. And in other words, just going through the motions. You know, it's like, okay, I know I got to pray. I'm supposed to pray. Well, th- that, that's not being sincere about praying. You know, God is excited when you come to him. And you come like, okay, I know I got to do this. I need to pray. Minister Linda said, I need to pray every day. 
It has nothing to do with me. It's between you and God. <laughs> Amen? So um, let me read this little story to you. It'll probably help you understand. It says, a well-respected man of God was out by the river one day when a young man came up to him and said, Sir, please teach me to pray. The old man asked, Are you sure you really want to know? The boy replied, Yes, of course. So the old man takes the boy by the hand and leads him to, into the river until they were almost chest deep. He dips the boy under. After a while, the boy begins to struggle and scream underwater, fighting desperately to come up for air. Finally, the old man lets him up. What was that all about, the boy asked. That, my son, was your first and most important lesson. When you long for God the way you just long to breathe, then you will be able to pray. I'm like, think about that. When you long for God, As desperately as you want to breathe, then you can begin to pray. Do we long to spend time with him? Do we desire it? You know, we're not just, like I said, just going through the motions. But God, I sincerely want to spend time with you. I want to get to know you. I want to be in your presence I, I don't, I don't want to go through this life without spending time with you. I don't want to go through this life without getting to know you, to understand who you are. I need you. And that's one thing I most mornings I, Lord, you know, I really need you. I need you. I cannot live this life without you. I cannot face this day without you. I can't do what I need to do without you. I need you, and I acknowledge that I need you. I don't want to do this without you. And so when you come to God like that, he's ready to help you. Because he knows your heart is sincere. Praise God. So one of the things I'm challenging you to do is to evaluate your prayer life. How good is your prayer life? How consistent is it? How stable is it? How rich is it? And, and let me say this, too. Um, there is nothing that says that I've ever read. You know, I know like Jesus, you know, he prayed all night sometimes before like before he chose the disciples and stuff but there's I, I've never read where Jesus said you got to pray for this amount of time I've never read that now that's not to say he may not challenge you to pray for you know, or he might say, you know what, I, I want you to spend more time in prayer. So I'm not saying that, but, but there's no law that if you pray five minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour or if you pray four hours or whatever amount of time, the important thing is that you pray. Yeah. That's what's most important. You know, and I have found that as you get into praying, you don't want to stop a lot of times. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. It's like, oh, well, I guess I, I got to go the rest of my day. I got to get up and get ready for work or whatever. But it's so rich. Your time with God is so rich. And so you want to spend as much time. But you know what the wonderful thing, thing about God is he goes with you wherever you go. Yeah. He's wherever you are. So... You know, if you're driving in the car, you can pray. If you're cooking dinner, you can pray. If you're taking a shower, you can pray. If you are um, sometimes even exercising, you can pray. Whatever, you know, he's not limited. 
in many ways. When I, I mean, he's not limited at all, but what I was going to say, in many ways, so what I want you all to understand is that consistency is important. And like we said earlier, you should develop a habit of praying. But don't put yourself in a box. Figure out what works for you. Figure out how you can spend that time with God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He will help you. He will guide you. He will show you how to do it. In different seasons of my life, my prayer time was different. When my children were younger, it was a hurry up and pray many mornings, (laughs) you know, because as soon as they heard I was up, them little eyes just popped open. Oh, mommy's awake, and we need mommy, and nah, you know. So, um, and then there would be times where uh, as they got older, you know, of course, then I'd say, okay, we are all praying. That was interesting <laughs> when they were really little. We don't want to pray. How long are we going to pray? <laughs> you know, <laughs> So different seasons in my life, my prayer life has been different. I'm in a season now where it seems like, you know, every time I turn around, I'm praying. (laughs) But I don't have little kids anymore. So my time is not consumed with taking care of them. So I don't know what season you're in. But I know all of us need to pray. And I know that our, our, our time with God is, is, is vital. If we want to be effective Christians, we have to pray. If we want to have the power that, you know, like Jesus said, the things that I do, you know, the can you do also the, 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 the things that he did, the, the, you know, the laying on of hands, the, you know, healing, praying for the sick, um, you know, even things he talks about in the Great Commission. If we want to be able to do those things, it's going to take us spending time with God. You know, when um, he talked about, when Jesus talked about the, you remember the, the father who brought his son and um, he brought him to the disciples. He was, uh, had a dumb spirit. And so they said that um, the disciples couldn't heal him. So Jesus is like, what's going on? So Jesus, of course, healed him. And then later they asked him, well, why couldn't we cast out that spirit? And Jesus said, you know, because th- that kind comes out with prayer and fasting. But you know what? Jesus wasn't saying, you got to run over here. You know, you got this situation over here and you got to go run over here and you got to pray and fast real quick. No, what he was saying is that this is a lifestyle. This is a lifestyle. I pray. I fast. This is Jesus. So when that situation came up, I'm already prepared. We don't have time to go pray and fast when somebody's standing in front of us. We have already had to pray. We've we've got to have been, we have to be prayed up, as they say. You know, I'm not real good on fasting, I have to admit. (laughs) I'm working on it. I'm better. I'm working on it. But for me, when you say fast, my body says, "Uh uh-uh, we got to (laughs) eat. But I am getting better. I really am. I'm getting much better at it. But yet and still, it's a lifestyle. Prayer is a lifestyle. In order to be prepared for your day, you've got to pray. In order to go throughout your day, you need to pray. Praise God. I'm going to stop.